Okay, so let, let's um, carry on. So let's have a little play of um, the Beethoven bar, sorry, the bar. Right. Book three. Okay, so just, just before we play, you can play either without, with or without mordants. Um, I was talking to other trainees at the weekend and I said, you know, the shift that they've put in here in the, in the minor section is such a complex shift that if you just miss out one mordant in the whole thing, you're fine. You can't do... Whereas it? You can't do that one in first position. <coughs> But you may find it's just too tricky for your student at whatever level they're at. Yeah. So, can I ask you to go over a little bit, Joseph, yeah. just so I see you both in the same. <laughs> so let's let's play without repeats, just so that I can see how we do. Do I remember that? No. Let's do it with the repeats, and I'll look at you, and then I'll look at me and we'll just see. something you choose to do when you come back to it. So, have we got any idea of what you do as a book three version of the first two bars? Would you like to demonstrate for me what you might think was really good in book one and what you'd be looking for in book three? So, mm -hmm. this is book one. Yeah. This is book this one. Is book one. <laughs> Good, and what do you, would you expect in book three? <laughs> okay, very nice. What did you do? <laughs> I could show that through the crate. And what did yeah. you have to do to do that? Change your bow speed. And then exactly where? Let's watch Mimi. <laughs> book one. demonstrating how you can play but it's it's all this stuff about teaching points is all about how do you do it yeah mm -hmm. so I noticed both of you had a much more elegant first note you know it's this stuff of going into more refinement on something and it's um, but it's more the actual bow distribution when you do this so on these two notes I think you'll find you quite use a bit more bow on the quavers. Just, just see. <laughs> and in both book one, 
In, in book one, I'm very careful to teach all the different up-ups. Do you know the difference between the up-up in Minuet 3 and the up-up in Minuet 1? How are they different? So really look out for this if, when you're coming to this in book three, that you can start the whole concept of elegant musical phrasing and you know how to do it. Mm -hmm. So the, the teaching points, if you want to write them in the book, are to, to I, and I often do a zigzag, there's a whiteboard, isn't there? I'll just draw it on the piece of paper. So in, in book one, you would have had da, 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 da. Bum, bum, bum. So I'll do it for you first. So you've got the slur and then these ones, so that's up and then this is going to go, um, uh, the trouble with drawing it is actually what you do is different from what you do, but that sort of thing, so that you get, you know, this has got more on that up bow, and then you've got a long down bow on this one. Mm. Something like that. Like yeah? Like a bit so. Back so you can see no, it. No, because they ha it has to get near to see it. Okay, and then the, the, the two little up bows are definitely much quieter. They're not part of the tune, they're a little sort of flourish. So in minimum one, the, the two up bows, um, melodic up bows, in, in other words, the, the, the tune, they're essential to the melody, and in minimum two and three, they're not essential. Yes. I don't know, you can find some words. I call them accompanying ones, but that's wrong, because it's, it's not an accompaniment. It's yeah. wrong. It needs yeah. a new word. Okay, so, um, so you can check out what is their ability to do elegant retakes at the end of line three. <laughs> So just check it out. A lot of people change in minuet one even. They change the dotted minim. They say, let's make it a minim. One, two, and then they do the repeat. That's, that's worth doing the same thing here. When you're doing a retake, you actually can explain about the rhythm and change it. So you've got more and more of this traveling bow in these bars that... Um, Travelling bow, where is the big piece in book two that it comes from? Uh, bow, um, Do you call it something else? Zigzag bow or Handlebore. That's yeah. right. So So put that in as your review piece for sorry, we seem to be talking now, but that's fine. If you want to just sit down a minute, I just thought it's nice to play a bit. Mm. I'll bring up a couple more chairs so that you've got a chair for your violin. Make sure it's right. All right. So what happens on the on the neck? You got all those there in that that one. Mm -hmm. 
Otherwise, it, it's pretty similar to book one. You could teach a carry on down bow there. So instead of doing a retake, they just slow the bow more. I think that's a choice thing that you can just do. Would you call that a carry on bow? A carry on down bow. I think that's what I would do if I was playing. I might even lift the bow off the string a bit. Why not? That you should be able to do that in book three. Mm. You know, some kind of little thing. So if you tap back, when do you take the bow off the string and the down up in book two? When do you turn? Where do you lift the bow off the string in a piece in book two? Uh, what, retake or? No, like, like um, this sort of thing. Um. <coughs> Gavotte from Minion. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, I really think that when they get to this. How are you going to do that little demi semi bow of rest or whatever it is? If you don't take the bow off. Oh, sorry. I hear it's very nice. I, I think it's really nice to get that idea of just lifting off and coming down mm -hmm. in, in Mignon. And, and then if you've done this here, you can go back and you can lift it off. So it, yeah. if it's not in your points for those other pieces, I would put it in, you know, even if you're going back because my mantra about book two, and I'm absolutely obsessed with it, is that if you teach book two to the highest possible level, book three is easy, they can play book four. If you put up with scrappy, not quite rhythmical, or slow performances of witches dance, and not like this, but if you're teaching, yeah. you know, it's so quick and um, all, all those things that you can do all the time, we find the book two pieces. So I think that's where there's much, much more in book two. If you're worried about book two, I think there's much more in book two than there is in book three. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. Much more. If there's an expectation now that you're setting up shifting in book two, so you've got those lovely shifting exercises at the back that, that really just completely transform bronze waltz, for example. You know, I mean, long, long ago in third position, fine, yeah, don't get that. Do you teach um, bronze waltz, waltz in, do you teach it in order? Do you teach it, so do you teach it first without the shifting and then yes. come back to it? And yes, you with the shifting? And, I, and I think that's a very nice, uh, nice way of approaching quite a lot of things, really, because, for example, in humor res, if you're going for big sound the first time they learn it, you're going to get a much better performance than if they go. Um, because they're obsessing about going into third position. So mm -hmm. I would always go for the music and then come back with techniques they're still working on and bring mm -hmm. it in. There's but there aren't that many pieces that really do much too string playing still. No, that's right. It's, and and uh, while we're on about it, you may as well, I'll just tell you my other little thing about it. Do you know about G-string playing? What do you know about G-string playing? I, I used to teach it wrong, I think, because I used to bring my arm up too high. I got told off for doing this. Okay, but the, it, this is a, just a very interesting thing. They're all very <coughs> accomplished at playing at the e, on the E-string. And if you put your finger, you probably can't. If you just play... <coughs> Don't stop. Just, just don't think about it. Just play everybody down a on E. And then stop. Freeze. Have a look at the gap between the rib and the hair. You'll have to stand up, Minnie, and turn towards me. Make the same gap on the G string. Right, 
Now, go a bit nearer the D string. Do the same weight, Joe. I would say it's not as loud. Yeah. Yeah? So it's a really big, important thing to teach when you get to human rights, the G string, you know, so that you can get that powerful sound. I know I'm skipping about, but it's sort of, it's sort of really, I think, relevant. So if you just go to human rights and just put first time, do, you know, if you don't want to write in the book, you can write it down. But I would really go for, and I ask them to sing. I might, I say, why don't you imagine you're a great big man like Pavarotti, and you go, he da 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 Sorry, video. You ask them then to have a competition with parents. If you've got parents and children in the room, it's just hilarious. It makes them all laugh if you add that with the knowledge that all we've got to do is really get over on the G string and you know really go for really big bows and see how big a sound they can make. I think that's so much more important than doing the third position stuff. That can come a bit later. So similar, going back to minuet, there's the second half of minuet, the minuet, the G minor section. I have been teaching B flat major twinkles from a third of the way into book two. Have you noticed that they do B flat major perpetual motion? Mm -hmm. They've written it out. Mm -hmm. So that finger pattern, when I'm in book two, my expectation is that they get this finger pattern, there'll be a colour for it. Uh, yellow hopping. Yellow hopping. Yellow hopping, this yes. is called. Or right. well, whatever, yeah. So that one, of course, is the same as third position. D major, you know, mm -hmm. playing up, up the A string. So I really get that very, very established because there are loads of pieces in this book that have got G, they've either got G minor bits or they've got B flat major bits. So it's, it's really worth doing that to keep the twinkles going. The reason for keeping the twinkles going, also this was invented by me, I'm very pleased that I noticed this. If in book one you've got, you know, variation E, then you've got perpetual motion with doubles. Then you've got a tube with doubles. Then you, there is no piece till book four where the bow moves as fast. Not one. You can check me out, but I know I'm right. So that's why you either keep the review of those doubles pieces going on all the time, or you, you just keep changing the key so they've got a, a different sort of challenge in their twinkles. So, so which, if you do B flat twinkles, I've never done that, which B flat? I'll start here. <laughs> going right behind it and the three going right behind it has a different shape it wants to be that sort of inner corner the corner of the finger near the thumb and then slide it right behind the four do you want to play one okay let's do fatter than the caterpillar and i'll do my lovely desk hand with it or try i'll give you the introduction you have to decide what you, how you want to teach it is this one uh, in the penultimate line I think in the next one and again you've got this rocking of the third finger yeah you're probably going to rock it so this is interesting if you think back to how you teach the hopping finger in 
song of the wind. If you get a child that does this flattening of the finger, you can say, oh, that's called rocking finger. We're going to do that in Brahms, we'll also in book two, but we're going to do hopping finger. Do you see, do you hear the language? It's just mm -hmm. different. So, no? Oh, yeah. Rocking. Yeah. Rather than telling them it's wrong, yeah. you can say, oh, you're going to need that, but in book two. So for now, we're going to do hopping. Right. Just a much nicer way to talk to them. Because you seriously do, and you also do it in walls. <laughs> I do anyway. I don't and want to go. go. And you're rocking the elbow. Yeah, and the figure, yeah. because I don't know how else to do it. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> yeah? So let's give it a name and, and say it's a technique. So, in this box here, what bar number is it? Somebody call out this one. 27. 27. Were the, were the it, most complicated notes? Yeah. yeah. I really do prefer the bottom fingering to the top one. So I think this is not particularly... Yeah, I do not. Yes. Um, I, I suggest as a teacher you just decide. If you decide that you really don't think it matters which way around you do it, then you can give the child a choice. But I, I like to go... Three, three, three. Yeah. Alright, so you, do the bo you can do the bottom one. Like we've just done. And then the two have to go right behind it. So, you know what I was saying about the um, B flat major twinkles, that the three wants to be on the inner corner. When you, put, when you do four, three, you don't want a flat three that is looking sideways over the violin. You need to be on the inner corner like that in preparation for vibrato. Do you know what I mean by the inner corner? It's the... Yeah, it's kind of like oh, that bit was touching there. Oh, oh, oh. So you go down the four, put your four on, yeah. and then you slide <coughs> down like that. So actually, it, it's slightly <coughs> more angled. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That looks good. Just do another couple oh, of times. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. So the two, you can't put it on this way. It'll be too high if you put it there. So you need to, you need to get it. Suggesting you don't oh. um, hop it oh, because no, it's because in a slur. So how are you going to do a hopping one in a slur? Yeah. 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 All right with that. We've also got another rocking one in the second bar of the minuet. Two. And you've got. In the slur. So that's another rocking three there. So the principle of stopping the bow before uh, doing the mordant. Bow's not not flying off. Again, Brahms walls can be another check one to see if they're going or whether they're going much so that, more sophisticated. So that stopping the bow before the warden is going back. Is that going just going back to um, the idea of fingers bow and bow? Um, get, get your finger down before you move the bow. 
Because you have to get that. I just think there is a little gap. Yeah. Isn't there? And that finger's got to get down, hasn't it? Yeah. Yes, and, and it just 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 talked about it use, using very very little bow, and I also think that um, the penultimate bar, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty one, that's how I like to play it. But what they've written underneath is actually inaccurate. It should be demi semi quavers. If you're going to go, if you're going to get dee da da da. But ya di di dong. Otherwise, you go ya da di da da. Ya ya da da di da da di da. Can you see what I'm talking about? The three semiquavers are written underneath. That's oh, not. Goodness. That's not how we play it. So you may as well talk to them about that. Yeah. Da da da. Did you say Sorry. the Did you say rocking finger was in bar twenty? Two. Twenty. As well. Oh, bar two. Second bar, bar two, minuet yes. two. Yes, okay, yeah, I've got that. Yeah. Is there another one? And then the rocking one in the bar twenty-seven. Yeah, bar twenty-seven. The other thing to watch is that the last, the note of that bar twenty-seven. The first finger is on B flat, so on the A they need to move the finger up so it's ready for the E natural in the next bar. So if you get them to move it here. Ready for E natural rather than just expect them to because if they leave the finger behind, yeah. then it's going to be flat. Yeah. So I think that is worth writing in there as well. So, for my money, you, you, you why do people say that? I have no idea. Um, this is a great mixability piece because you can combine book one and book three. It's a good piece to come back to because of the um, what we were talking about with doing refinements on things. But there's there's not too much. These little exercises at the bottom. The four A is straight out of minuet two, so you may well have already done it in minuet two. You know that really clear double string crossing, you could move the speed up a bit, ready for book four, because that, that underpins a lot of the Suzuki method is that we do something slowly and then you do the same thing, speed it up. And this is exactly what's happening in the second exercise, 4B. They've done slurs, they've done this slur. Put it in minuet to three in book one. But by asking for you, you're, you're starting this figure very right start. So you're looking for that starting to do that that lovely sort of um, flexible wrist stuff that's going to serve them well in the next book. Is that what Heather calls waggly wrist? Uh, no, I think waggly wrist for her is much more about um, is it the, the wrist here? coming up, at sort of um, okay. that sort of thing, you okay. know, All right, so that they stop being okay. so straight. So waggly wrist comes into the bow changes, or the right? bow changes in Judas Mag. You don't want to do this really. Watch here. Yeah. You really want that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there's a sort of so mm -hmm. all this sort of painting the wall and things like that. That that's more waggly wrist. Right, okay. Yes. And this is looking forward, I think, to stuff in book four. The the ability to do the the circular stuff here. And also the barrier large in the next one. Section. Very useful for size two. It's right there, you know. So if you 
start it here and you speed it up, that would be a good use of those little exercises there. So would you... For book four. Are you still looking for also some finger action in that? Or is it just the wrist? Uh, or maybe introduce it more as wrist and then by the time you get into book four... I would introduce expecting. wrist. I, I think the whole finger action stuff, definitely you need to start... That has been something that I really think of as book four. Mm -hmm. I used to think book four, you have to check the vibrato. You have to start shifting because in the last century, the first shift in the Suzuki method was in the Vivaldi. Oh, wow. Ow. Which Vivaldi? The A minor. Really? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, the power of the P and Gun, gun you know, come on, gang. This is, so, the one thing they didn't change, which I'm upset about, is that the first piece that's got any spiccato as such is at the end of book five. So I think in book three, you know, I don't know if you've got a, a sort of cover checklist. This is something I do. You might like to take a photograph of it. This is why I brought the books. Oh, it's not in this one. Oh, the glow. <laughs> <laughs> it's in my old one. But at the beginning of the book, I... I, I wonder if I've got that in book two. Well, that's also a new book. Is that... Th yeah, this sort of thing, this okay? This is isn't it? Yes, that's mine. So, in book two here, I've, I've just made a whole list of things that I think are relevant. So, one, whole bowl, waggle wrist, painting, pencil exercise, flexing knuckles, bouncing elbows. Can I take a photo? Of course you can. <laughs> two, Robin Hood, examining left hand finger pressure, whole bow comfort. Three, preparation for shifting and shifting. So there's an expectation of shifting. Number four is bow division. Five, develop. Mm, interesting, that's obviously mm, fill it in yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's probably vibrato. Um, which pieces are using thin pinch? Which pieces use waggle wrist? Mm. And then the grade two ABRSM is a sort of Please, I, I sort of think if we're going to hold our heads up high, then any child approaching book three needs to know what an arpeggio is, what a minor harmonic scale is, all that stuff. So mm -hmm. if you check it out with yeah. what an expectation would be, and maybe you throw some more on in there as well, third position D major twinkles or B flat major twinkles. Nine, teach B flat to the highest level in preparation for book four. Number ten is the same. And then 11, you see, I was looking um, where they focus on harmonics, I think, is, uh, is under humoresque, that last note of humoresque. But I know loads of teachers who teach harmonic twinkle. In other words, they're teaching shifting in book one. Yeah. yeah. Yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got that total comfort there. And then, the, and then book two, also, you've got characterization of pieces. And I have, I have, you could go on, you know, really fine coordination, isn't there? Yeah. required to do something like Mignon beautifully. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Lots and lots of different... Um, do they, do, they, do, they do harmonics in the... I don't, do you do... Uh, Musette? Uh, uh, no, I've seen... Last note of Musette, yeah. Boccherini. Boccherini, yes. Yeah. Do you yeah. just teach that straight away, the harmonic? Yes, I would, yeah, I would, I would teach the harmonic twinkle. You know, I think it's really twinkle. worthwhile yeah. to do. Okay. So, let's have a look at the G minor. So here's another picture you might like to take. I'll just show it to the camera. So in the in the da da dee dee da, you're going to do this as um, broken up bows getting bigger. That's not even you see the lines, but the up bows you can also make the up bows bigger as well. So that's a, these two are really big teaching points. So let's just go over them. So stopping this slur uh, first and going. Good. Can you can you can you actually have less sound in the beginning of the first one? So it's good. And then the other one is. Less here. So 
you've got a good half third for the C. Yeah. Yeah, but I would go all the way. Right, when you do this 3A, check that your students are actually dropping the elbow. Phrasing, you, you're talking about phrasing a lot in these. Yeah, let's just play this first bit together. showed me this wonderful thing. I just thought, this kid showed me and I went, right, that's it for life now. <laughs> yeah, got it. <coughs> I tried teaching, you know, you go to the top of the scale of a major scale, and now, do ti la, la is the minor. Yeah, I did this, doesn't really work. You know, some people talk about semitones, that doesn't really work. And somebody came along and she said, oh, I, my theory teacher just said that if you draw the note, that's the first note of the major scale. Then the minor scale starts on the line underneath. Or, you know, within the key. So if you're in A major, say, A, you go to the note underneath with the key signature of A major, and you get F sharp minor. Okay, I'm just, oh, that's another one for me to write down. <laughs> yeah. Or, so, so, yeah, so that one, that's a really, it, it, it's really great. So then you have to say to them, okay, that means if we're going to go from a minor scale to a major scale, let's choose a minor scale. Let's have A minor, because there's no, oops, A minor scale, no sharps, no flats. Then, instead of going down, you go to, if it's a space note, you go to the next space note, oh, it's C major, belongs to A minor. Yeah. Could you do another one? Sure. Would you, which way around would you like uh, it? Uh, the minor, then the other way. Okay, so this is major, that's A major. Yeah. So you put the key signature in, three sharps. Yeah. And you write the space note underneath, if it's a space note. Yeah. So that tells you it's F sharp minor. Right. Okay. So let's do another one of those. So take some of the simple ones. G major, key signature of G major. Sure. So this is the G. So what's the relative minor? Uh, e. E minor. It's as easy as it looks. But I mean going the other way. From going the other from way, the you just have to go up. So if you, if this is the, the first note here is A minor. A minor has no sharps or flats. You need to know that. Right. So you draw the next space note up, and that's C, C major. So in G minor, which has two flats, you've got a G. So what's the relative major? Well, it will be flat, so you want, you want There you go. And 
it's, you have to be specific and actually identify it as that. You have to call yeah. it by the name oh, of the okay. note in the key signature. They share the same key signature, whichever way they're going. That, that's when you go to the relative minor. minor. Yeah. So when you go from G major to G minor, those are different key signatures. Okay, so we've got into B flat major. You've got another bit along uh, where it goes D D R E R E R E R E R D R, which you want to do with um, stopped slurs like this. Like a machine, absolutely even. So that is bar ten and a half and eleven. And quite honestly. If you do those, this is why, you know, this is why they learn them quickly in, in book three. Compare this piece with the trickiness of learning which is dance, or two grenadiers, or mignon, or Beethoven minuet, or Boccherini. It's a double. You know, if you've got the, 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 the hand position set up from B flat major twinkles in book two, they can play it really, really easily. So as you can see at the bottom 15, they talk about harmonics. Um, now, I disagree with the bottom line of humoresque. As humoresque, we've already talked about one thing in humoresque. We've talked about the basic principle of going back and putting shifts into the, the Bach minuets after they can play it with all the right notes. If, you, if they really want to play all the right notes, then you will have to teach them that, how to do that shift. But I've just heard really poor shifting. I'd rather hear the tune without any shifting. Which piece are we talking about? Sorry. Page 13, Minuet 2. For example, end of the line. They've got it written in third position. But... Yeah, I reckon it's just as acceptable just staying in first position. But if you want to do bar 13, you do have to shift. So, I leave that with you. But just it depends why you're teaching. I mean, if you, yeah. I mean, you know, if you if you want to teach shift, shifting, that's an opportunity. But for instance, if that's not going to Cut it for a performance, then leave it out. Do what leave it nicest. You yes, know, that's something that's right. You might teach because they need to learn it, but you wouldn't necessarily. But want there to are. The, do, you know the, like do you know that. the Neil Mackay position shifting book? That's yes. got much nicer shifting tunes into the much mm. more lyrical, really nice. So I, I think that was a good one as well. Yeah. I think in this level, I would be expecting <coughs> to, to have supplementary stuff on the go. Yeah, so like an yeah, easy study true. book or, you know. So you're pulling in pieces which have, uh, just make more sense with shifting. Shifting, yeah. So so when, do you start, when would you start teaching shifting then, roughly? I mean, I know it depends on the kid, but... The actual the act point. of shifting, definitely, yeah, in, in book two. In book two. So yeah, what, middle, middle ish book, middle two. book two. Or maybe before that, I don't know. So I, I, I'm yeah. really not a sort of. Oh, when I get to this piece, I do. No, this. I know. That's why, that's why I qualified it with it. Well, it depends on the people, obviously. But I, I, I yes, but I think you know roughly you've got an idea if you're trying to build yeah. them up for for book three. With yes, because I want Brahms horse with the shifts in it. Yeah. I just think it really works on so many levels. Do you, do you know the one I mean in in the Brahms horse where they yeah. go? Um, First of all, they go. Yeah, so one more shift, isn't it? Which yeah. is really lovely because 
you've got the normal, the first high note shift actually yeah. heard. Then you've got an arc goes in a gap. Oh, thank you. All right. And then in this second half, where you go. going to open E at the end and going for the highest note just right. makes a very yeah. musical sense yeah. so I really want that I really want that performance so when I'm teaching waltz I'll teach it the first time but there will be an empty box down the bottom of it waiting for a star which says with the shifts mm -hmm. so if you do things like that when you're looking through books and things and have you got a credit for this you see it and you can, it's sort of like a little helper for yourself as a teacher to know that you can go back and do that mm -hmm. Um, however, having said this about shifts, that there are three shifts in humoresque I teach right from the start. And these are the bar numbers. 23. This isn't humoresque. Humoresque. This one. Okay, so if you bracket the last two bars of that line plus a note, so the last note of 22, 1A. Yeah, so you're going from, oh, I'm going to it. One, from here, okay. from here. If you start there with a down on top, and then you go to a two. a really nice one if you're going did you get it yes or no you know walk so, across the room so do you put a two on that i put a two yeah. on that second so one in third three. position yeah. because then yeah. you've got yeah, two position. and then the third finger is right next to it yeah. you keep the two as a sort of anchor feeling then mm -hmm. you go two one which is right next to it so you've got all these fingers like this a sort of little clump of sort of yeah. all across the string semitones. And that's easy for them to understand. It means it's in tune. It means you're not trying to do a slur across a string, which you are if you stay in first position. Yeah, from the... And it also means you've got a rest to come down to the first finger after you've done the, the second E. So you've got first position up to third position, third position, third position, in the gap, come back down. Mm. It's really a beautiful fingering, it works really so very, very well. So that's the one I definitely, one of the three I definitely teach, that one. The second one I teach is on the second line of the second page, bar number <coughs> 39. I do the bottom fingering. So I go 3, E1, E2, 1. I put a red 0, which means shift on the open E string. 1. I use third position as the colour for here if you want to see it. So you shift on that E and then you're in third position to the end here. Okay, so this is the one we were talking about on the first page. This is the second one where you shift on the open E and then you go up to the top. And the last one is at the end. I really like to go Joe's and well, more when to go up the shift from the beginning earlier in the bar. Yeah, well, it depends when you're doing all the shifting, but I mean, you could, you, you, yeah, if you just sort of um, 
Yeah. And then at the end, I it, it, they give you an option of two, 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 four. But I don't like that as much as two, four alone, four. I really like that. So that's what I teach, but it's not one of the options they give you. They have two A, open A, and then A to a harmonic, which is bonkers to me. Open A. That's not musical. Yeah, but fun. staying on the D string, I'm going two, 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 four is fine, but I just prefer, so just put another option you can choose, two, four alone, and then up to the harmonic. I think if we were meant to stop, start at quarter to... 12 and finish at half past 12, which I understand is the timetable. <laughs> then starting nearer to 12 and finishing at quarter to one means this is a nice time to stop, I think. Yeah. Yes? Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.